Hey guys, so in my history class recently, we've been studying the women's liberation movement and like the feminist movement, and I gotta say, there are a lot of organizations in it that don't have very well, shall we say, pronounceable names. It's just like a string of random letters, and you're supposed to remember what they mean, but you can't pronounce it. Mad props to NOW, the National Organization for Women, because you did a great job with your name. It's like your name is relevant to your cause, you want it now, and it's pronounceable, and it has a, like a short, easy to remember name, good job. The rest of you, I, you can learn a thing or two. This isn't a criticism of any of those organizations in any ways, just their names. And they make it so that when I'm learning about them in history class, it's not exactly the easiest thing to keep all of them straight. It just gets confusing. And that's not just a problem in history class, that's a problem for the organization too, because if we can't remember your name, how are we supposed to remember what you do? Like, oh, did you do that or did now do that? Well, I can remember the name now, so... Let me give you some examples of just how easy it is to make your acronyms pronounceable and real words. I'm gonna take some topics that I think could be political issues and make up fictional organizations about those topics. Our first topic is butter. Now I just gotta come up with some names. First off, we've got CHURN, the Committee on Harvesting Udders for the Republic and Nation. How about DAIRY, Dan's Activist Institution for Rye Yumminess. Now this is a very specific organization founded by a man named Dan, and he really wants to make rye bread taste better, so he puts butter on it, it's a political issue, there you go. And finally, LARDS, the Layperson's Association for the Reduction of Dairy Spreads. That one is for all of us lay people who don't know that much about dairy and stuff, but we want to get rid of it because it's bad for you and it's a health issue, therefore it is also a political issue. That's enough for butter. How about dogs? Pupper, the People's Union for the Preferred Population of Elegant Retrievers specifically golden retrievers, and other kinds of retrievers. Doggo, the defensive organization of good golden owners. This one's for people who own golden retrievers and feel that their rights have been compromised. It's a defensive organization. These all seem to be about golden retrievers. I really don't know why. I can't help you with that. Let's move on to the next topic. Organizations about beans? That's a pretty political issue. Here's one. Lima, the Lentils and Murica Association. That one you had to use the slang term for America. Murica. Pinto. People for the Integration of Non-Tomato Objects. This is for a group of people who really want to make sure that our food doesn't contain tomatoes, and they suggest beans as an alternative. It's kind of a stretch, but you know there are people out there who believe that. People believe anything. Look, the specifics of my examples are not important. What's important is that you see how easy it is. If you're planning to start a political organization, name it well. If you need help, leave a topic for me in the comments, and if it's a legitimate political organization, I will come up with a better name for you. Please drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.